He's Hackle. Did you say Hackle? Why, yes. He's only my chief clerk, that's all. Mrs. Malloy, I demand an explanation. And I'm going to give it to you. <sighs> Why shouldn't she know Cornelius Hackle? He's at the opera, at all the fashionable homes. Why, he's at the Harmonia Gardens restaurant at least three times a week. Impossible. He's only got $146.35 to his name, and I keep it in my own safe. <laughs> Oh, you're killing me, Mr. Vandegelder. He's one of the hackles. They built the canal. What canal? The battery. Oh, Both. I ain't the same man. Who took the horses out of Jenny Lynn's carriage and pulled her through the streets? Cornelius Hackle. And who dressed up as a waiter at the Fifth Avenue Hotel and dropped an oyster down Mrs. Astor's? I can't say it. But it was Cornelius. He's the playboy of New York. Now, Irene, I can see you were taken with him just like everybody else. Oh, really? No. I've only seen him once in my life. Excuse me. Really, Dolly? I... Ah. Wow! Minnie, hold your tongue! Mrs. Malloy, there's a man in there! Now, see here. If there's a man in that closet... Oh, uh, no, Mr. Van Degelder, you can't. It's too dangerous. No man that hides in ladies' closets can frighten me. Stand aside. No man, indeed. I'm sure you'd make any short work of sh any man if, if you tried with those muscles rippling back and forth under your coat. Rip all, rip all, rip all, rip all, rip all, rip all. <laughs> For the last time, will you stand aside? Stand, indeed. That's what the law courts will want to know when you're accused of entering that closet without a search warrant. I mean, what do you stand for if you don't stand for the law of this great land? I know what I stand for. I stand for motherhood, America, and a hot lunch for orphans. Take off your hat, sir. Betsy Ross's flag is passing due. You see him on the hill at Gettysburg, neath that great triumphal arch. If you see him as he's tramping through the grapes of wrath, stand up and march, march, march. Has this not affected you, sir? Why, I came here as an immigrant girl at 14 years of age from a land that oppressed my people, and I echo here the words that are said by that great and patriotic American. Uh, Moses! I stand for motherhood, America, and a hotline for orphans. Take off your hat, sir, there's a tear-stained eagle passing due. You see him on the bridge at Waterloo, neath that great triumphal arch. If you hear him singing Dixie through the sugar cane, stand up and march, march, march. March, march. I stand for motherhood, America, and the hot lights for orphans. Take off your hat, Sir Betsy Ross's flag is passing due. You see him on the hill at Gettysburg, beneath that great triumphal arch. If you hear him tramping through the graves of wrath, stand up and march, march. Four score and seven years ago, march, march, march. For a perfect union. March, march. Down the torpedoes, full speed ahead. March, march, march. So you see, Mr. Van de Gelder, there couldn't possibly be a man in that closet. A Jew. God bless you. Mrs. Malloy. All right, Mr. Vandergilder, there is a man in that closet. Aha. And another under that table. What the devil? And the, there also happens to be a very simple explanation, but for the present, good afternoon. Oh, my goodness, the room is crawling with men. I'll never get over it. I take it I'll see you later this afternoon. You certainly will. And with a certain young lady on the main floor of the parade. Good day, Mrs. Malloy. Wait. <laughs>